Hello everybody, today we're going to be playing round 5 in the Popper Challenge with Burn. We are 2-2. Two and two. We've lost against Boggles, and we have lost against Tireless Tribe Combo. We have played against Mono Black Aggro, and we have played against... Uh, one more deck, I can't remember off the top of my head. We are in 2-2. Two and two. I think we can still top 16, possibly, if we win these next three rounds including this one so fifth sixth and seventh round we might be able to go top 16 and make more than our money back so we are currently 35th place with our record of two and two so we're going second we are up against dd fan going second with burn already sucks but it's life My dream one day is to be able to play Burn at a Popper GP hand in hand with Modern, Legacy, and Standard. See little Popper boys and little Popper girls burning the shit out of their opponents who are on greedy Popper decks like Blue Black Control. That is my dream. Alright, opponent not know if they want to go first or second. Um, it might be that they dropped, uh, which could be a free win. That happens a lot in modern challenges for some reason. Uh, yeah, because, oh, they're just away from the computer maybe. You know, maybe they went and did a chore or something like that. Whoop. Let's bring that to normal. Cool. Yeah, like maybe they're doing some something else right now. Uh, hopefully we're going to have an actual game. <clears throat> Let's see. Whoa. What? What? What the, what the heck? Why can't it show more of the sideboard? What? That makes no sense. So yeah, I hope they said that our opponent is away from the computer, not that we are just going to get a free win and you know no actual gameplay. <clears throat> In the meantime, we can talk about random stuff. So, Masters 25, right? Tree of Redemption from Innistrad. No Snapcaster, no Liliana, nothing really special at all from Innistrad, except for Tree of Redemption. So, I guess that card is kind of the hallmark of everything wrong with Masters 25. It's, one, it's, 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 it's a reprint set, and... Wizards of the Coast decided that for this set, they're not going to reprint cards that are wanted by the community and by players. That is, when you compare uh, A25, Masters 25, to Modern Masters 2017, Modern Masters had enemy fetches. It had Liliana. It had Snapcaster. It had, I think it had Goyf, I don't recall. Um, it had a lot of cards that people wanted uh, for Modern. So Eternal Masters had a lot of cards that people wanted for Legacy. So those are both good sets. Modern Masters is probably, I think, uh, one of Modern Masters 2017 is one of the best um, reprint sets ever, in my opinion. Uh, oh, so our opponent's here. Okay, cool. Um, wow, this hand is so slow, but I think I'll keep it because it has a Fire Blast and it has just a lot of win conditions. Preordain. Okay, I don't know what our opponent could be on. Could be Tireless Tribe, could be Mono Blue Devil, could be Blue Red Devil. We really don't know. So with Masters 25, um, I have completely lost my train of thought, unfortunately. Um, okay, so they're F6ing, so they don't have days. Or maybe they're trying to say they don't have days. They know that, you know, they wouldn't really have anything to counter turn one. Okay, looks like Blue Black Control. And they gained a life, which sucks. Um, so they can't counter anything. So without a daze, and with their, if they're Blue Black, they probably don't have a daze. So the one thing I don't want to get countered is so Curse of the Pierce Rush is amazing in this matchup because it's now they have they can't remove it, they just can't. So they have a clock no matter what. So now they need like a Gurmag Angler to do fun stuff. So yeah, Masters 25 reprinted um cards that were scarce, not th that were expensive because they were scarce, that is there weren't many, very many of them, rather than cards that um reprinting cards that were needed. Uh, that 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 everyone plays, like for example. 
um, fetch lands, you know? So everyone wants fetch lands. Um, so fetch lands got reprinted in March Master 2017, and they're still expensive because fetch lands are just, you know, very sought after cards. Whereas a card like, say, Imperial Recruiter isn't very sought after. Rather, it's a card that's expensive because it's so hard to find. So let's say there's, for example, 100 copies in the in the world for Imperial Recruiter, then, you know, it's a hundred plus dollars to get it. Now Master 25 should make those copies go way up. So it's going to go way down for the card price and no one really wanted it. It's just like the people that did, the few that did couldn't really afford it because they're just so rare. So we're going to play Archer. So keep in mind, uh, Curse of the Pierced Heart is winning us the game right now because our opponent is one for wanting us and we haven't gotten any more land. So we can't do two things a turn. Yeah, echoing decay. Like I don't care, because you're taking one a turn. So my so the opponent our opponent here needs to clock us out, because we're clocking them out. Are they going to counterspell? Sure. If I was super greedy, I would have like fire blasted my opponent, but I don't think I'll do that unless I have like four lands. Ooh, Moldrifter. Okay, so I hope to draw land so I can searing blaze. Hell yeah. Searing Blaze, Lava Spike, <laughs> opponent's nearly dead. They have six turns left, um, Fire Blast is four, Magma Jet is two, so that is lethal next turn, but if they hold up a bunch of mana, I'm not gonna risk you know the counter spell. Countering a Fire Blast when I sacrifice two mountains really sucks. <clears throat> so I'll just play out Firebrand Archer and see what happens. <clears throat> so our opponent is holding up one counter spell, it looks like. So they still have counter spell mana here. All right, all right. So they're putting something back on top of our library. Uh, we'll back Firebrand Archer. It doesn't really matter. So we'll play Firebrand. So this isn't really blue back control. I guess you kind of say it's more like I don't know blue back tempo. So we're gonna, if our opponent taps out to kill this Firebrand Archer. Oh fuck! What the what? I I I pressed F two. I didn't press F six. Well, that sucks. So I can't fire blast in response and win. Oh well. Uh, we're still probably gonna win this. <laughs> Chittering rats, no problem. Now the second Chittering rats is gonna suck. So I'm gonna put magma jet on top first because if they play a second rats, which they can't anyway, they don't have a swamp. But oh. Looks like they're gonna bring back the dismal backwater, try and gain some life next turn. That's a that's a thing you can do. Correct, yeah. You can do that. <clears throat> so I'm gonna magma jet my opponent on my main phase. So if they counter, I win. Yeah. So you need days and you can't even yeah, no, you lose. GG. <clears throat> All right, so Curse of the Pierce Heart, good. So we are against some weird, like, Moldrifter. It's blue-black. It's not control, but it's like a Moldrifter thing. Um, Pyroblast is good. Martyr of Ashes. Okay, so we don't want Electricery, but Martyr of Ashes is a maybe. The question is, do we want to try and kill them ASAP or try and, like... Nah, we're not going to try and kill their value cards with, like, board wipes and stuff because... The point is that like their value cards win in the game when they play them. So against a counter spell deck, we want to get rid of shard volley because like a one mana bolt, like a mini fire blast, just isn't worth it. And I'm, I kind of want to say searing blaze, but I think searing blaze is actually good. So I would say magma jet is probably best. So yeah, our, like our two worst burn spells: shard volley, magma jet. Get his control deck, it's not very good. Fire Blast is a lot better, because it doesn't cost mana. Zero mana, deal four, basically. Okay, so opponent's going first, so they can keep up counterspell mana for the curse. Doesn't matter, though. I'm, I'm going to play the curse when they can't counter it. I'm not going to be dumb with it. So our opponent gained a life, which sucks already. <laughs> so they do not have counterspell mana. They might have a... Blast the what do you call it? Uh, Hydro Blast, which is why Curse of the Pure Start has problems uh, in game two and three, but still worth it. So 
So if they play a creature, sweet. So I'm gonna Searing Blaze the creature. I'm actually gonna, I'm not gonna Searing Blaze it, right? Okay, I drew a mountain, so I'm not gonna Searing Blaze now. So I'm gonna play Firebrand Archer, go to my opponent's turn, and then they're gonna take damage from the Curse of the Pierced Heart. So now I can Needle Drop my opponent, and I'm gonna Needle Drop them if they try to remove the Firebrand Archer. If they don't, I'm still gonna Needle Drop them. Let's see what they do. Doom Blade. Okay, so Needle Drop. Like, why not draw a card, right? Always yield. Draw a card. Opponent swings for one. Oh boy, I'm definitely going to die now. So I'm going to play out the Thermal Alchemist and just wait. Okay, counter spell. So now I'm going to Searing Blaze. So we're not going to play this mountain in our hand unless we get another mountain. Because that way if we top deck a Searing Blaze, we can still deal three with it. Moldrifter. Cool. Three mana, draw two. Not bad. Okay, so they're holding up a Counterspell. So because that's the case, I'm not going to Curse. Although Curse is amazing. And it's definitely going to suck if they Hydroblast our Cursed, our Curse of the Pierced Heart, like, really soon. Basically, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to risk... This card is such a good it's such a good card in the matchup, because my opponent needs exactly Hydroblast to remove it. Moldrifter. Oh, boy. Okay, so... We're going to... Do we want to bolt our opponent? I think we do. Yeah, we're going to bolt on their end step. So opponent tapped out when we had three cards in hand, so I think that was a mistake. And now I'm going to Fire Blast. So they're down to one. So they need double Hydro Blast now to win. To, just to survive, actually, not to win. So I feel like opponent is, our opponent here is probably just going to lose because they can't really come back from this. And they would have used a Hydro Blast a long time ago if they had it. So they need to not only gain life, but also to Hydro Blast. Okay, I get a mountain. Fine with me. I guess that's one reason I might have wanted to um, drop the mountain. So I couldn't get Chittering Rast if my opponent had double Hydro Blast. But that's like so many exact cards they need to have had that it doesn't really matter. Okay, so they lose. GG's. So this looks like it's the um, Ghostly Flicker version of Blue Black. So they have Moldrifter and Chittering Rat. So whenever they flicker, they like make me put a card on top and then they also draw two. So really good. Um, so we're three and two. We played against Blue Black Flicker. And we will have to see uh, if we, I'm not sure if we have a chance at top, it's probably not a chance at top eight. Um, Oh, look at that. This Boggles guy is 5-0. Boggles, good. This is the guy we played against earlier. He summarily destroyed us. Um, yeah, Burn's fun. I like it in Popper. It's a, lot of, it's, a, it's a good deck. You have zero mana. Like, Fire Blast is a fun card to play. Um, Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one.